The year after that uh, in Helsinki for OR is, is, is promising to be equally as excited, equally as very uh, as we hope you found it this year. So it's now um, my pleasure uh, as a, a, to, to wrap up the conference for us to introduce uh, a colleague of mine, uh, Peter Burnhill, uh, who will be familiar uh, to many of you indeed uh, for his dancing exploits on the stage, if nothing else. But, but more importantly, uh, his, his background is someone who, who throughout uh, my career in this, Peter continually has, has, has popped up, whether it's in matters to do with digital preservation, uh, with, 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 with geodata, uh, with the social sciences, uh, with research data issues, with, with, with publications, with repositories. Uh, Peter's got a long background in this and a great deal of knowledge, and I think he's, he's going to be wrapping up and giving us his impressions uh, of, of, of the highlights of the event so far. So I welcome Peter to the stage now. Are you... Ah, it, it. I've, I've found a use for this eight gigabyte of space. I have a small wordle. Now, where does this go? Can that go? That goes down here. Okay, if that could just go up. So, um, I realized when I was asked by Kevin to uh, do this duty that, in some sense, I was being given the, uh, the Clifford Lynch spot. Yeah. Um, and I don't mm -hmm. necessarily walk as round as much as Clifford does. Um, and neither, actually, do I do it very well without notes, as you, everybody who's. Um, ever seen Clifford, he has not only a great capability of uh, actually doing the summing up and telling us all what it is that we really were saying, <laughs> um, but doing this uh, as though it were impromptu and it's just come to him. Uh, for my own part, I, I've got some notes, um, and I'll, I'll have to tell uh, Microsoft that I am using Microsoft Word for this presentation, um, uh, so um, thank you very much for that. Um, so, if, if it's the one called Wordle, is it the Wordle, that club of click there? So, um, we begin here, so, um, uh, remind us of our theme at OR 2012, which uh, open services for open content, local in and global out. So that's our theme that we had before we got registered and applied for conference programs and all the rest. So, um, I'm not sure we exactly kept to that. Um, but what's evident, it seems, from this wordle behind us is that we actually did do some of the things. So this actually is an aggregation uh, uh, or, and a summing up of all of the tweeting that's been going on during the conference. Um, and I, I'd like to thank Adam Field both for collecting all of those tweets and for creating a script to make good use of wordle, and, and this is it. So we could actually base the whole talk around this, I suppose. What's really good is uh, a couple of things. One is that on the left hand side, or the right hand side there, you'll see um, all of the principal tweeters. Um, so Mr. Nick there has been doing quite a bit, and Cameron Nalen um, has been, I suppose, name checked in some sense as much as uh, doing the tweeting himself, um, and various others there on the left. And they've produced this stream of words. Um, and as we can see quite nicely, open repositories is actually there, so we've kept to that particular theme, I think. Um, but clearly data is the big arrival, and I think there's a sense in which data is now mainstream. So if we look back in previous ORs, there were discussion about repositories, and um, I recall various times when uh, Clifford's given his talk and, and in one place or another about repositories, and has talked obviously about the fact that its services around repositories are important, and I think services crops up there of different things which are which are happening, but also the importance, I think, for us, UK in particular, that we got rather obsessed with research articles and with the evaluation, REE and REF and the rest of it, and the repositories were about more than that stuff and the importance of data coming on. And so data's in there. Um, what's interesting, it seems to me, is that the term multimedia doesn't feature, but maybe videos is in there somewhere small and things like that and images, so there are a, a bigger range of things. Um, there's quite a bit of Twitter down that way and workshops and the GISC managing research data is in there, so um, uh, I'm sure Simon's pleased that it was worth his um, coming on crutches to uh, uh, oversee what was going on with that. Um, anyway, I'll now get back to what I thought I was going to say before I saw the Wordle, um, and you'll be pleased to hear that the battery is failing. Um, <laughs> so I may not be as long as I thought I would be. Um, <laughs> 
So anyway, um, um, unlike Cliff, um, I haven't flown in from afar. I've actually a local, so I've been here since '79 and the rest of it. So, um, but I should also say that I actually haven't been on this local organising committee. So none of this huge benefit of enjoyment we've had in the hosting there isn't actually down to me in any sense whatsoever, except a tolerance of colleagues actually putting in, in enormous amounts of work. So. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that you, you're all, that I think over 460 did register, and I think it's from over 40 countries uh, participating, so it's a truly international uh, event now with, operation, uh, with, with open repositories, and we expect you all, therefore, to go to uh, Prince Edward Island and make it, I don't know if you've ever had people from 40 different nations there at the same time, but we can see what we can do. Um, <laughs> So um, Edinburgh is a, is a fine city. You haven't had a full opportunity to see it because when you arrived, it was a little bit damp. It's brightened up, and so you have some opportunity to go out there and see some of it. And Edinburgh is, in some sense, very much like a repository of scholarly resources, you know, from David Hume, uh, 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 Peter Higgs, and more broader with uh, Harry Potter. You know, so it's a, a broad range of, of uh, people living in, in Edinburgh and contributing, and again, a sort of a, a local in, global out, because I hope you knew about at least two of those people, uh, depending on those things. Um, and although I think it's up to others charged with thanking everybody, because that will go down many ways, I'll, I'll, I'll do some of that. And, um, and thank you first to John and to the uh, OR Steering Committee for um, entrusting Edinburgh with the task. Um, I hope we've done reasonably well on that regard, and uh, both for the local organising committee, um, uh, which was uh, led by uh, uh, Stuart MacDonald of the uh, Data Library here in Edinburgh, and uh, William Nixon from that other place further west, uh, the University of Glasgow, uh, and just to show you that we do actually talk to each other, and, it, it, and that, those, that leadership worked very well. But of course it only works well because they have colleagues to actually do things, and, and I could start listing lots of people, but as I said, my battery's going low, and um, I'm bound to miss out somebody. Uh, but I think that it's going to be done, and we've got a list somewhere else, so that, that's very good. Um, so in some sense, I would like to sort of shift of the notion of content of what we had in our um, conference. Well, we had a key keynote, uh, keynote speaker in Cameron Nalen, and beginning this formal part, and he really was actually, I suppose, telling us to get into spaces outside the repositories, outside academe, so that output could be turned into outcome and then potentially into impact. And those are the words which we're all getting familiar with in the institutions as researchers that has to do uh, with a flow of funding that rewards us or rather in informs us, allows us to do all of the things that we need to do. Um, so the, 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 the cry to the researchers is about turning good research outputs into beneficial research outcomes. And that's one of the, the purposes for all the things that we do. I guess there's another purpose for all the things we do, which is to ensure ease and continuity of access to all the resources that our researchers and our students and our teachers require. And that's what motivates us, if you like. Those are the, the verbs that drive all the, all the nouns that we start talking about, repositories and the rest of it, and making sure that there is security of access to that content. Um, so as, as a part of a more sort of general rumbling that you might have heard when the workshops began, and I think they were extraordinarily well attended uh, before the formal start, um, there was this notion of disruption. And uh, that's partly the notion that not only are the digital economy, in some sense, things being digital, disrupted the way in things ordinarily were done, but it was a cry also that we should not be passive about that. We should go in and take command of the scholarly communication uh, arena that we require to do our job. And there was that cry that came out formally from Cameron, which we should, we should heed, I think. Um, and. Um, there was also, I think, um, notions in there about uh, citation. Uh, several people were saying, well, why you go out into those spaces of, of uh, LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter or whatever is actually to cite links back to the content, either links back to announcements about important research outcomes, but also links back to the content that we regard as having some provenance. And that's one of the words I think that's also come through there was a reference, I think, by Cameron to do with um, 
uh, uh, journals being like repositories and repositories like journals. Well, one of the things that we actually pride ourselves about journals and about that as a, as a mean of communication, a channel of communication, is that there's some trust that you can put in about the integrity of that material. So whatever we think about one thing or about and publishers, if you go to a publisher's site, you, get, you have some expectation that what you're getting from them is that journal article. So if repositories, in some sense, are going to step up to that plate to perform, one of the key U USPs, that, you know, the, the special uh, uh, aspects of repositories, is an expectation that when you go to a repository, that you get an object that actually is what it purports to be. And it moves us on from the notions about what something is about as to how it came about. And some of us in, in, in the statistical world uh, might have thought we get a data set and you, know, you don't just analyze the data set without knowing how it came about. You need to know a lot about how it came about. But that's no different, really, about lots and lots of material, which is now out in abundance on the web, where you do not know whether it really is what it purports to be. So again, this is a, maybe a movement that, that the, the repository world should think about what it is they are really doing, given that notion of assurance. It's not necessarily a quality assurance, because that's, I guess, to do with the filters of the users that we've always talked about. Uh, but it's the fact that it is what it supposes it is, and also from that object, information object, it might actually begin to tell you how it came about, that you can interrogate it and know how to interrogate it to say, well, who are you, what are you, give me traces back. So the old idea of scientific reproducibility, perhaps, is that the object can tell you how you can reproduce it. Now, that may not be true in some time things which move on, but you learn enough about how it was produced so that you can then regard critically what sort of quality you can, uh, uh, can give it. Um, oh, gosh, now we go on then. Okay, so we move on then. So that's about provenance. Now, there's the thing about provenance, it seems to me, is that... Um, Matters of file integrity and format usability and other aspects of digital preservation are, of course, critical. But they're not the same as provenance. It's an orthogonal aspect. We, we need to make sure that we can properly care for those things. And, and I recall a talk about uh, bad fairies and good keepers. Uh, but maybe that was just me in my dreaming about fairies looking after things or not. But we need to make sure that we follow a very nice little um, set of words said by uh, Hector Garcia Molina and Rajev uh, Matwani of Stanford, which was digital information is best preserved by replicating it at multiple archives run by autonomous organizations. Now, that was a statement quite some time ago. And what I think we've begun to see in digital preservation in, in OR 2012 is examples of implementing that, of ensuring that there is some assurance given by the fact that something's been looked after by more than one way, more than one organization, more than one geography. So we're spread betting across things and also working out how we really exploit the internet, the telematics of the internet, as well as take care about how we exploit the, the, the thing being different about the digital that it's very malleable. So we can care, I think, in ways about provenance that we're assured that it hasn't been tampered with, but also we're assured that the long term of neglect or of decay, that you know, build it in it shall rot sort of idea, um, that, the, that there are procedures in there. And I think those sort of messages that we've had in the past, um, we are now acting on. And there are some interesting examples that have uh, been put out in the last sessions during uh, uh, today. Um, so moving on, I think this notion of global in, sorry, local in, global at. It is the idea that, that locally, as institutional repositories or subject repositories or data archives or, or whatever, we, we need to act, take responsibility, but also understand what it is that we can look to others for, how we might share some of that risk. And there are a couple of interesting references to disaster recovery, which is separate from preservation, but actually the more you think that your repository is becoming mission critical, all the more important that when you fail, and you will, because again, as a statistician would tell you, in the long run, the unusual happens more often. And so as you are successful, large, mission critical, and then you spill a cup of coffee over it, because it was under your desk or whatever, 
You know, you've got to think that the unusual will happen. There will be floods, there will be disasters of one sort or another, there will be economic close downs or whatever. So you've got to think about also the failover and how you invest that disaster recovery. And it was very interesting to see, that, again, that was picked up with some of the presentations that were given too. Um, I was thinking about other topics that there were, and in fact, there were too many topics possibly to summarize. So you're very fortunate, I'm not going to attempt that. But there are some key things, I think, that came out. One is a beginning of an understanding of the roles of registries, of how we, again, can get leverage over somebody else taking responsibility for saying something or looking after something. And registries are all to do with authority, of see whether we can drive back to the authority that tells us when a change can take place, who owns authoritatively that statement. Now, maybe sometimes they don't have the technical wherewithal to deliver that to the web. So maybe they need to work with a secondary or whatever. But we always need to be clear as who owns the authority for that decision about um, an identifier, for a change in identification, uh, for organizations and actions. The, on identifiers, a nice breakout of discussion about whether they should be dumb or intelligent, um, and again, what the authority is. And I think that was an unresolved discussion. It was interesting to raise it, and I think we've got to push at that to understand how we're going to use identifiers and get leverage of that, whether about data, whether about uh, 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 education resources or about uh, whatever the things are, how we use that. And again, things being digital, we know that they can change. And we've got to find a way we can cope with identifiers that's economic for action. So try and find a way of bringing this up to a higher um, a form of uh, uh, entity that maybe changes less and has, has children in terms of uh, things that it produces. The other one, I think, again, which came up there was about citation, as I mentioned before, and that collided, in my mind, with identifiers in, in, in one presentation. But I think there's this notion about um, sufficiency for citation, and it, it also connects back to uh, what Cameron was saying about connectivity. So we need to understand how, if you like, the messages get sent from the spaces that we're being told that we should go out and uh, occupy. And remember these spaces of Facebook and Twitter and all the rest of the stuff, uh, we don't own. So although we can use them, I guess we should not rely upon them as being our safe places. So you know, in terms of things within the academy, we have responsibility for ensuring that we can manage our own safe places but we don't look inwards, we look outwards and we occupy those spaces where people are and we get citations coming back, that is to say, calls and connectivity that we've been spoken about. Um, to, to finish perhaps um, on something else that's happened this year. So the previous four years, you might have heard there was a thing called Repository Fringe that we held here in Edinburgh. And it grew, and I think it's been very successful in many ways. And then, if you like, we won the big one. That is to say, do the official open repositories. And in some sense, this was great, because it indicated that what we were doing with Repository Fringe, with people coming and participating, was really good. But there was also a sense of trepidation, because there's quite a lot of you. <laughs> And there was a sense in which that you know, would repository fringe survive within the official? And so we've been thinking about that. And so we had this notion about a separate track. So, um, so I've been asked to say one thing, certainly, which is that University of Edinburgh at the moment intends to do repository fringe next year in 2013. So we've, we're, we're going to maintain that. Uh, we have to get buy-in from all our uh, checkbooks and the rest of it and those who actually free up the resource of folk to work on that but there's an intention that we see what we can do with that so whether we call that the uh, uh, the sixth repository fringe uh, or the fifth one I think we'll probably call it the sixth because I think repository <coughs> fringe actually has happened this year and the feedback I've been talking to a variety of people about the different things where they have been coming so there are a number of people we know here who um, if you like have um, well, I've been talking about those who are, irre are irregular attenders at Repository Fringe, because I wouldn't describe many of them as regular. Uh, and they're the people who haven't got collars to their shirts. Uh, and asking them what it's like to have a lot of folk with collars to their shirts turn up. And by and large, I think they've all gotten very well. Um, and I think that there's been this buzz, I hope, that you've felt with some of the unconference character of Repository Fringe that has come in um, not to dominate or overly change OR, 
as you've come to do it now in your seventh year, but to influence it in some ways. And I think that the, the challenge or the invitation, I guess, is for uh, Prince Island to see and the program committee that comes from that is the extent to which some of that flavour is worthwhile and you might want to have that. We ourselves are planning, as I said, round about the same time, but actually we hope that we can move Repository Fringe a little bit closer to the Festival Fringe, uh, which is one of the reasons why the people with T-shirts turned up, because they could go AWOL and go and listen to other sorts of stand-up comedians other than the ones you usually get. <laughs> So, um, with that, I think I've almost come to the end of the wordle, uh, and I think I've come to the end of the notion of summing up. Um, as, as Kevin said, um, I don't know whether he was being kind about how old I was, um, but the, um, one of the interesting things to me is that data is not only fashionable, but obviously it's come back, and as I said, it's sort of the big mainstream here. So... Um, uh, in the mid-80s, we started a data library here in the University of Edinburgh, and that was very much connected with a, um, uh, uh, an organization which I'd like to just name check, which is iAssist.org, uh, the International Association of Social Science, Information, Service, and Technology. And I've been speaking to the Canadians about their meeting that they're holding there, because there was a, there's another circuit of things where people have been dealing with social science data, and uh, some of us, and there's a past president, Anne, in the audience, and I'm a past president of ISIS, and it's our duty and responsibility to make some connections. So the interesting thing about the data library world is that they were the demand side. Largely, what they were doing for social scientists is why it started there, is to find data, be in evidence, for their inquiries and to ensure that it existed. So there's a there's that demand side, whereas a lot of what I think repositories and now data repositories are about is about the supply side, to ensuring that the production of data is well cared for. Now, clearly, th they're not in opposition to one another at all. But it'll be interesting to see how there might be some blending of memberships or at least attendances, and we'll be saying the same, I think, to our colleagues in ISIS about the upcoming conference in, in, in Prince Edward. Um, that there's a good gang of folk um, in, in Canada engaged with, with iAssist uh, because the, the circuit there is with CapDo and the like between uh, 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 meeting in the States, meeting in the Canada, meeting in the States, meeting in Europe, and that's its circulation. So there's a group in also south of whatever you call the 49th, etc. There's whole people there who might be able to drive up, who knows, uh, from New York State or wherever they like to go from Maine up the way there some group there, but also I hope that the, the, the balance of many of us here, because it's been, a, as I said, 40 countries, um, that we can find a way also of connecting across from Europe, across to, in, to invade uh, Prince Edward for a while, um, and, and to keep that, that balance, knowing that there's going to be Helsinki also in the year after that. So I think we'll do our best on the ISIS side, because um, we think that ISIS has got a lot to learn from repository people, and we we'll looking at the supply side, and the metadata thing as we've moved into the data. And social science is interesting because it, it straddles, in some sense, uh, the concerns of uh, psychology and economics, which have methodologies which are similar, in some senses, to the uh, physical and, and life sciences, and also in the humanities uh, with their textual analysis, and et cetera, et cetera. So th there is something to be done there. So that's my, my last word, I guess, in the wrap-up, is to do with this notion of connectedness, is that as the notion that the technology of repositories has become mainstream and in many senses the policy world has changed around us so how is it that open material can be made available we've got the technology of that but we've also got the possibility of connecting to others who have been working in those areas whether they're in the data area or might emerge somewhere about the educational resource area at some stage as well um, so with that, I'll finish because the whistle is about to blow. <laughs> Thanks very much. And indeed, I'm very glad, Peter, that uh, you didn't force me to, uh, to use the whistle there. Oh, yeah. So I should also probably, if somebody's going to thank the sponsors, well, I should do that as I walk off. So. Uh, indeed, right. indeed, yes, that's... Uh, so I'm going to begin uh, just before we get to 
to thanking all those involved and, and, and sending you on your way with an apology. Um, you may have noticed that we, we seem to have the builders in uh, outside. Uh, it's related to the fact, I mean, those of you who, who, who come to Edinburgh frequently or live here will be aware that we have this, this small event uh, once a year, the world's largest uh, festival taking place. Uh, and, and we should have known it happens about the same time uh, every, every year. We didn't quite realize that the vans and, and, and the construction company were going to move in uh, exactly the same week. Uh, that you're here. It, it so happens, this is one of these cases where we know exactly when the Google satellites uh, were overhead because this picture we're pretty sure is from about two years ago. It's showing you here we are uh, at the moment in, in this building here. Uh, and you can see that, that very object outside that, that, that uh, I think this time is being constructed somewhere around here in George Square. What you haven't been able to see so far, but I think I've seen evidence that they're in the middle of constructing at the moment, if, if this is going to play ball with me, uh, is this structure, which I think the vans have just turned up to build. Those of you, that's uh, something like a 40 meter long upside down purple cow uh, that, that appears uh, in, in, in Bristow Square once a year. If you're able to hang around here for a bit longer or come back, you can understand why it's there and what it is that goes on there, just part uh, of the craze that happens uh, with the, the festival here every year. So that's uh, our apology. We hope you still manage to uh, enjoy uh, the event and get to, to, to move around. So it's been, uh, it's a worrying thing, posting something like this, and we'll be talking to our friends at uh, Prince Edward Island uh, about that. You know, it's a bit like hosting a party. You get all the preparations together, and, and you're never quite sure until people turn up uh, how it's going to, to, to turn out. But it feels, from our point of view, that the, the buzz has been good. Uh, I've got a lot of people to thank for that, beginning uh, with, with all those who, you know, who submitted content and spoke. The people uh, who helped me review all of that and make the choices uh, for, the, for the program, and in particular, uh, one colleague here at, at Edinburgh, Stuart Lewis, uh, who just continually assisted every time one reviewer or another let me down, I needed somebody to, to do more content. Stuart just kept volunteering to do more and more and more. Uh, I think he, he reviewed more than twice as, uh, as many contributions uh, as anyone else and turned them around really quickly, and I'm, I'm grateful for that, and grateful to all of those. Uh, who, who, who did uh, that work. Grateful again to our sponsors, uh, as, as uh, Peter uh, has mentioned. Um, to the staff here uh, in, the, 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 in the catering uh, at Edinburgh First, the folks who have been moving the, the, the microphones around and, and who've made uh, the, the things here work as, 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 as they ought to. But particularly uh, to uh, my colleagues on the local organising committee who have really done um, the hard work, William Nixon, Stuart MacDonald, James Toon, Philip Hunter, Ian Stewart, Andrew Bevan, who definitely deserves uh, an award for I think the, the most persuasive uh, gatherer of sponsors I think we've had for, for any uh, event that I've certainly uh, seen, uh, to Sally McGregor and particularly um, to, uh, to Nicola Osborne who's been doing uh, great work uh, as you're all aware, with the uh, social media side of things. And to Florence Kennedy, we, we, we depend so much on Florence because Florence has done this sort of thing before uh, on a scale that, that none of the rest of us has, has done. The other year, she managed to, to marshal, I think it was something like a 1,000 computer scientists milling around, none of them knowing what they were doing, and they managed to have a conference without really realizing how they were, they were doing it. We depended uh, on that knowledge greatly. And I believe that there's some small token of our appreciation somewhere in, in the room that William uh, is about, is going to materialize here. Just, just behind the curtain, like, where are the boys? Indeed. So, so Florence uh, and, and Nicola, would, are you able to come forward at this time?
Thanks very much. Most of all, thanks to all of you. Um, it's, been, it's been a buzz for us. It's been uh, a great event, and it's all of you who make that possible. All the different ways that, that you contribute, whether it's the bringing together uh, of people from very different professional backgrounds to exchange their different perspectives on ideas on what makes repositories possible. I felt in, in all of the, the presentations I've been going into, seeing examples of that again and again and again, and it's that cross-fertilization of ideas from different countries, from different continents, and from different backgrounds that makes events like this worthwhile. Uh, and may that continue uh, in Canada and in Finland uh, for many years to come. Uh, we're, the conference doesn't end now, it just changes shape. We know we've got the, the individual user group strands going on for the next day and a half, but for the moment, I think lunch beckons. Thank you to all of you. And we have to see you.